So this is a very special day. It's gonna be our first showcase on the brand new feature that just came out to Grand Summers Global, which is Dream Evolution or Dream Awakening. And since Dream Awakening is so new, uh, a lot of you guys might actually not know all the nuances to the system. So I'm gonna explain it just a little bit before we go into the actual showcase with the boy Roy. Whenever you go to the Dream Awakening screen, which you get here by just clicking on Awakening, you can be able to Dream Awaken certain characters. Now, not every single character in the game is gonna have at least two different dreams that you can pick from. Sometimes they have even three. But in order for you to activate the Dream Awakening or in order for you to pick this path, you will have to have the materials that you see at the bottom. However, let's say you Dream Awaken and you don't like this dream. Can you switch it to the other dream if you want to? And you absolutely can as long as you have the materials to be able to switch Roy, for an example, to the water dream, you can do it. And then not only can you switch him to the water dream, you can also switch him back to the fire dream if you have the materials to do it. It will cost you the summoner orbs, the fragments, and the awoken souls, so it's not a free switch back and forth. At least you can switch and you're not hard locked into it. That's pretty much it for Dream Awakening. Every single Dream Awakening is different. Not all of them are the same, so there's not really like a general what is the best dream. It's just pretty much character to character based. But hey, now you know about Dream Awakening. So as you see, we did Dream Awaken Roy and we picked the Crimson Dream. The Crimson Dream is a dream that allows him to get 300% crit damage, which is kind of nice. But since it's been a while since we checked out Roy, let's talk about all of his abilities. Really, he only has one good passive, which is Knighthood of the Empire. The other two, kind of whack. So you see the skill increases crit rate and break power during enemy arts. And you see that the art has pretty much the exact same thing, but at a higher value, of course. His true art is the only thing that doesn't rely on this, and his true art inflicts ultimate freeze. If you don't know what ultimate freeze is, ultimate freeze is pretty much just like regular freeze, except except it gives you 100% crit rate if it goes off. In terms of his slots, he has a 5-star physical, 5-star heal, 4-star defense. Not too shabby. Best in slot here, if you pick the Crimson Dream, I'm assuming that you're going to be going more nuking oriented and more attacker oriented. So because of that, with the 5-star physical, you want to rock out with anything that's going to be giving you more damage or lowering the enemy's physical res or water resist or whatever the case may be. For the 5-star heal, Fina Devil Wings just to have the stat boost. If you don't have Fina Devil Wings, any other heal item will be great. The four star defense, if you're nuking, Relic Dola Armor. If you're not nuking though, just use a four star defense that counters the boss's damage. Now in terms of the crest slot, if you went with the Crimson Dream, you would probably want to go with something like attack up, crit damage up, promise of funeral god, or art gauge up. If you went with the water dream though, you would probably want as much break power as you can get and art gauge up would also be pretty solid. Now if you haven't been able to notice it, I am recording this commentary after I recorded this entire video. I did the classic OP move where I didn't click record for my audio so you can't hear me at all. I recorded a 40 minute video that was live for no reason. But hey, make it work just like how we have time and time again. And let me tell you, after using this man, I am, um, I don't know if I would say disappointed, but I'm not really seeing the hype in the Crimson Dream. And let me explain. By showing you what happened, this was the first team that I decided to use with Roy. And I wanted to see if he was able to nuke the regular takedown battle, the training battle. Not every Awoken character in the game can one-shot nuke this. In terms of super Awoken characters, pretty much all of them can practically do it. But I was curious to see with the 45k multiplier, the 300% crit damage buff, using this team here that focuses on more crit damage and damage resist downs, art damages up, a bunch of stuff happening. I was under the impression that maybe Roy would have enough deeps to kill this boss. We didn't really get that close, I want to be honest. Like, it was okay, we got to, you know, a little bit below half, and I was like, you know, I feel like it's possible for us to actually one-shot this guy. This is where I should have quit, because I did this for the next 30 minutes. This time around, we went with a different equip, which was a physical resist down. The first time we did this, we didn't have a physical resist down on the team, but now we do, so I wanted to see if it worked. We popped off with Emilia and everyone else, and I was like, all right, massive water resist down, physical rest down, this might kill. And as you see, we did get a little bit closer, just a little bit, but it's still not enough. I had the great idea of what about instead of using Forte, I use Miyu, since you know, Miyu gives 200% damage up to humans. Well, and this time around, we did kill the boss, but guess what? Roy dealt no damage. <laughs> I thought that since Miyu's super art is kind of lengthy, Roy would be faster than Miyu, so he would be able to actually deal the most damage, but it wasn't the case at all. Miyu just hits harder. So on my quest to try to get Roy to one-shot this guy, my next character that I decided to use was Ainz. Ainz gives 100% crit damage. I was like, why not just stack even more crit damage and see if this is possible? So I did it again. 
to see if we could kill. And surprise, surprise, in this setup, we actually did kill too. It seems like every time we use a super awoken character, we kill. However, I dealt the most damage. How did I do the most damage and he's not even the one getting buffed? <laughs> Clearly, the entire team is focused on buffing up water damage and lowering physical resist. The only thing that's beneficial to Ainz in this entire team comp is Celestial Gate Key. And he was still able to out DPS Roy. And this just goes to show you that modifiers are the biggest factor when it comes to how much damage you can deal. Then I had the brilliant idea of what about if I break nuke him? What about if I use Est and I pop off with S's damage and I use Roy? Does this kill? And you may be surprised, it actually did. This was the only time that I actually was able to one shot this boss with Roy. If I did not break this boss, I don't think I would have been able to get the one shot off. But as you see, um, this also had an issue because Roy wasn't the most damaged. I wanted Roy to be top damage on this one shot and Emilio was top damage. And at this point, I was already 40 minutes into recording. And I kind of just uh, said, you know what? Screw it. Screw it. Who cares? <laughs> Even though Roy didn't one shot the training stage, and this was kind of what the entire showcase was trying to do, was I wanted to one shot a boss and just see how much damage Roy could deal. Roy still dealt amazing damage for what he is. The fact that he has a 45k multiplier and is able to hit upwards of 4 to 5 million damage at a time is nothing to laugh about. In most cases, I want to say Roy just comes off as a fun unit to mess around with. He has the potential to be really strong if you don't have anyone else, but if you have these other options, especially the super awoken characters, let's say you do have Eins, well, Eins could just be your damage dealer at that point, right? Or maybe you have War God Finn. War God Finn can do the damage on his own. He doesn't really have to rely on anybody else. Or maybe you're somebody that has Shaltir or Saber Alter, and those situations, you won't be using Roy at all. I don't see why you would ever even turn to this character unless you're trying to do maybe some of the mono water floors and you need a more of a damage dealer in that. So you do use Roy in those situations because you pretty much have to. But even with all that being said, either way, that's going to be it for this one. Tell me down below what you guys picked in terms of your dream evolutions. Did you go with Roy's Crimson Dream or did you go with the Water Dream? Or maybe you don't even have Roy. Maybe you just aren't going to do anything with him. Let me know all that type of stuff down below in the comment section. Also, while you're down there, let me know too. Should I show off anybody else from this batch of Dream Awakenings? Or should we wait till the next batch? Because I'm not really interested in any other Dream Awakenings. But maybe there's a Dream Awakening that I've overlooked. So you guys can let me know if there is someone that deserves a showcase. Let me know down below so we can use them. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you all again for coming out. And last but not least, you guys already know, don't forget to drink water.